Take a good day, Lubbock. 8.44 on this Thursday morning. And just in time for Halloween, we're learning about some folks calling themselves ghost hunters. Fox 34's Lindsay Ashcraft joins us now, and she brings a special guest, Miss Patty Starr. Welcome. Thanks um, so much for your time. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. So, now, our Lindsay Ashcraft is not the ghost hunter. <laughs> I am not. I'm just a reporter. <laughs> but she's been working on a story about ghost hunters. So tell us a little bit about what you've discovered and what you're working on. All right. What I did, I followed the West Texas Paranormal Investigation Society. We went to Hell's Gate. It's an area located behind the Lubbock Cemetery. It's got this old, rickety railroad bridge. I guess it's out of commission. It's wooden. Really old. Creepy like I said, looking, I'm sure. Creepy. Okay. Especially at night, and we found that out. But it, when we were there, we didn't seem like we were getting a lot of activity, so we went on over to the Lubbock Cemetery where we thought we would do an electronic voice phenomenon session and maybe capture the voice of legendary rock and roller Buddy Holly. Okay, so you're a certified ghost hunter. Yes. Tell us, is this possible? How does this work? Um, well, now when people ask me a question, I'm going to answer it based on my experience. So uh -huh. it's not fact, it's not law, just based on my experience. Uh, but me as a certified ghost hunter, I use a lot of different equipment. And my favorite piece of equipment is the recording device, the audio, audio recording device. Because you can actually ask them questions and they will answer you really? back. And, uh, you know, like some people will say, ooh, well, couldn't you be picking up radio waves? I would say yes, because anything is really possible. Uh, but when they answer your question directly, then I have to say, wow, I think we really have some good evidence here. So how long have you been actually ghost hunting? Ooh, I've been ghost... I, I, I always tell people I've been a ghost hunting enthusiast for over 30 <laughs> years, okay? Um, I started actually documenting my um, activities probably in the 70s, just through photos and things of that nature. Then in the 80s, I started reading more about the voices, capturing voices. I got really good, good at that in the early 90s, uh, honing in on my technique of how to get these... Um, spirits to actually communicate back with you and not just getting random uh, voices. Um, and then from there it's just gone on to other instruments, EMF meters, infrared thermometers, infrared sound uh, meters. Um, uh, and, and with that I like to show physical evidence as well because intuitively I can sense what's there but then what background does that give you? I mean, it's like, oh, sure, she says she feels a female spirit. But then if I have a meter and I'm asking questions um, and the meter is responding yes to that question and I'm saying, is it female? Yes. Okay. Or I may say, how many spirits are here? Can you beat that out for me? And it beeps. Really? Beeps, beeps like nine Yes. So um, it's very interesting for me. I, d I also teach ghost hunting. So it's good for the students to also have some type of visual so they can see that there really is something happening here. I'm sure that's a popular college class. Oh, sure. yes. <laughs> well, we're so glad you could be with us oh, this morning. thank you so much. All the way from Kentucky, that's too. That's right. Oh, wow. yes. Lexington, State. Kentucky. Yes. And we're so glad. And if you want to learn more about this, Lindsay's special story airs tonight, tonight yes. on the news at nine so make sure and tune in for that thank you so much for being oh, with us this morning thank you